Hey everyone, welcome to the third module of the Introduction to Malware Binary Triage course. Today we will be looking at the portable executable format. So first and foremost, what is a file format? A file format is a defined structure of information which resides on a file system. And when a file is opened, a handler is initiated by the operating system that loads the file's information into memory, parses that information, and carries out the operation of the file type. So for example, if you were to open an image file, this would be opened by the Windows image handler, which would parse that image information and display it to you as an image. File formats are typically distinguished by file magic. File magic are bytes within the file header, so at the beginning of the file, or the file footer, so at the end of the file, which are unique to a specific file format. In the case of portable executables, the magic is MZ, which distinguishes an MS-DOS header, which is a legacy header prepended to the PE header. This magic can be seen in the hexadecimal dump provided here. The file command is a very useful command provided on Unix systems that can be used to identify certain file types. And this makes use of file magic along with other file characteristics in order to identify their file type. In this case, the file command has distinguished that the file in this case is a PE32 file. It is a console application and it was compiled for the Intel 80386 architecture, which is the CPU architecture that it can be executed on. So the native binary format used in Microsoft Windows is called the Portable Executable Format or PE format. This is the binary format that we will be analyzing in this course. The base format is referred to as PE32, which makes use of 32-bit addressing. And this was later extended to PE32+, which is used to support 64-bit addressing and 64-bit CPU architectures. The PE format can be used to both execute unmanaged code and managed code. Unmanaged code contains raw x86 and x86-64 instructions that are executed at runtime, and they can also be used to execute managed code, which is interpreted at runtime by a given framework, such as the .NET framework. Programming languages such as C and C++ are compiled into unmanaged code, where programming languages such as C-sharp are compiled into an intermediate language bytecode format that is stored in the PE and is interpreted at runtime by framework libraries that are loaded by the PE. There are multiple types of portable executables used by Microsoft Windows. These include standalone executable files, which commonly use the .exe extension, but can use other extensions such as .scr, which are used for screensaver files. These can execute independently without the need for an external program, and these executables run in user land, which is the lowest privilege level of the Microsoft Windows operating system. Dynamic link libraries, or DLLs, are binaries which act as dependencies to standalone executable programs. And these files contain code and data that are used by standalone executables in order to carry out various operations. The majority of userland interactions with Microsoft Windows are conducted using an application programming interface or API, which is provided by DLLs. These APIs are commonly used by malware authors in order to carry out operations which they do not want to implement themselves. Windows drivers are also portable executables, however, run within the lowest level of the operating system, commonly referred to as kernel land or kernel space. Common types of drivers include device drivers, which provide a means of hardware interacting with the operating system, and filter drivers, which can be used to modify input-output requests between user land and kernel land. During the malware development process, malware authors will write code to carry out malicious operations. This code is provided to a compiler, which turns the source code into machine instructions and stores the required data to execute the program in a binary file format, which in this case is the PE format. Library dependencies are statically or dynamically linked in order to include external code or references to external code where required. Static and dynamically linking of libraries greatly affects the reverse engineering process. Static linking will embed given library source code or library binary code into a final binary, which will be executed by the binary at runtime. This greatly increases the size of the binary as the library code is embedded within the final binary used by the malware author instead of being referenced externally. This also makes reverse engineering more difficult as the code needs to be identified by the analyst within the statically linked binary. Dynamic linking references DLL files, which are resolved by the loader at runtime. The external libraries are loaded into memory and their exported functions are mapped into the loaded PE memory space in order for them to be called where required. 
This results in a much smaller binary since the majority of the code required by the executable is stored in these external libraries. There are two types of dynamic linking. The first is load time dynamic linking, which occurs when the binary is being loaded by the loader, which uses information within the PE to locate names of DLLs on the system in order for them to be dynamically linked against the PE being loaded into memory. Runtime linking involves the use of functions such as load library and load library X in order to load specific DLLs at runtime and get proc address to obtain function addresses within these libraries to execute. This differs from load time dynamic linking in that DLLs are programmatically loaded and functions are resolved by the PE once it's executed. This is a common technique used by malware in order to hide its malicious intent by only loading functionality required to carry out malicious operations at runtime rather than load time. So let's take a closer look at the portable executable format itself. So like all file formats, portable executables have a predefined structure which contains what the loader needs in order to execute the code within the binary. PE start with the image DOS header or MZ header. And here's a comparison between the raw hex dump of the image DOS header of a malicious binary and the bytes in the form of its defined structure. Each part of the portable executable structure is predefined and can be used by analysts to understand the binary's functionality. The image DOS header is a legacy part of the PE format that provides offsets for executing 16-bit code instructions, which were used to execute DOS programs in earlier versions of Windows. The highlighted bytes and struct members include the MZ magic bytes, which are used to identify the MS-DOS executable, the E underscore SP, which is used as the initial stack pointer for executing the 16-bit instructions, the E underscore IP, which is used as the instruction pointer to begin execution of the 16-bit instructions, and the ELFA new, which provides the offset to the cough header, which is also known as the image file header. So here's an example of a DOS stub that contains those 16-bit instructions, and basically this code is used to state that the program cannot be used in DOS mode, and this would be printed to the user if the user attempted to run this particular PE32 executable on a DOS system. And this is commonly used to distinguish a portable executable in memory by analysts during analysis, since it is very unique. The cough header is also known as the image file header, and it contains a number of important struct members. These include the PE magic bytes, which is used to distinguish the cough header, the machine member, which specifies the system architecture, including Intel x86 and x64, the number of sections within the PE, sections are units of code or data within the portable executable format, and sections will be covered in detail later in this module. The time date stamp contains the compilation timestamp of the PE. This is commonly used to find out when a sample was compiled. This timestamp is modifiable and is commonly modified by malware authors in order to hide when the sample was actually compiled. This is commonly referred to as time stomping. The size of optional header provides the size of the optional header, which follows the cough header. And the cough characteristics is an enum made up of flags which specify characteristics about the executable image. So let's look at the image optional header. PE32 magic is used to distinguish whether the optional header is PE32 or PE32+. PE32 is also commonly referred to as PE64, which is used for portable executables that are compiled for 64-bit architectures of Microsoft Windows. The major linker version specifies the major version of the linker used to link the binary when being built. The minor version specifies the minor version of the linker used when the binary is being built. The address of entry point specifies the relative virtual address or RVA of where to begin execution within the binary. This is a very important member. The base of code and base of data members refer to the RVA of where the code and data will be loaded into memory. And these are relative to the base address, which is the virtual address address at which the portable executable is loaded into memory. This is merely a suggestion and is typically changed by technologies such as ASLR, and we'll discuss what that is in detail. The major subsystem version specifies the operating system version that the binary was built for. The size of image specifies the total size in bytes of the PE image once it is mapped into memory. 
The characteristics or DLL characteristics defines a number of attributes, including image DLL characteristic dynamic base, which specifies if the PE image is going to be relocated at runtime. The image relocation is done by address space layout randomization or ASLR, which is why the base address is simply a suggestion as the image may be mapped to any available virtual address to avoid fixed offsets. These fixed offsets are commonly used by binary exploitation, which is why ASLR was invented. This is important to know while reverse engineering as PE files are mapped into different addresses when using things like debuggers. And this has to match your static analysis tools such as IDA when you're analyzing things statically and you're doing both static and dynamic analysis side by side. The image optional header contains multiple data directories which are loaded by Windows at runtime. The structures in the optional header provides their virtual address and sizes. In the highlighted example, this particular sample does not contain an export table and therefore the address is of size zero. However, it does contain an import table and therefore has an image import descriptor entry that points to the image import address table. This table contains import names and virtual addresses of those imports once they're resolved at runtime. So as mentioned, imports are used to define functions needed by the PE from external libraries to execute at runtime. The Windows loader uses the image import descriptor data directory in order to resolve imports at runtime. This data directory points to an array of image import descriptors, which include the import DLL name and references to two separate arrays, the hint name array and the import address table. The hint name array contains information needed to load each import from the DLL, which is then used to overwrite the import address table in memory with the resolved import addresses. Functions can be loaded by ordinal and by function name, which is shown in the diagram. Ordinals are numbers which correspond to a given function, which can be used to resolve a given function rather than using the name itself. Memorizing the intricacies of these structures is not typically needed, but understanding how these structures are used by malware is important, and this will be covered in a later module. So here's an example of using IDA Pro in order to parse a portable executable. And within IDA Pro, there is a section called imports, which is loaded automatically when a portable executable is loaded. And IDA will map each import to a virtual address, which is relative to the image base address within the PE32 optional header. And this includes the function address, name, and library that it was imported from. Exports define functions that the DLL has available to other binaries. The Windows loader parses the image export directory to find exports at runtime to map to a PE's import address table. The image export directory data directory contains references to the name of the DLL, function addresses, export name table, and ordinals associated with each function. It also contains the number of exported functions and the number of names associated with those functions. A lookup is done in the following steps using this data directory. Take an export name, say hwrite, that is searched for within the export name table. And once the corresponding offset is found, so in this case two, the same offset is used to acquire the ordinal from the address of names ordinal array. And the result of this is used as the offset into the export address table. So like imports, IDA will automatically parse exports from given DLLs once they're loaded. IDA will automatically load exports and map them to virtual addresses that are relative to the image base address within the PE32 optional header shown here. So in this case, we can see two entries that are exports for this DLL. The first is loader and DLL entry point. So without getting into too much detail, DLL entry point is essentially a made up export for a given DLL, but loader is a valid entry within this export table. Other important data directories include the image directory entry resource, which points to multiple level tree structures which contain all resource data and descriptions. Resources are commonly used to store data used by malware authors at runtime, and we'll show you what that looks like. So we mentioned the number of sections within a PE. Sections are units of code or data which are loaded at runtime in order to execute a given program. The sections contain all required information for a program to run. In addition to code, sections store import and export data, resources, uninitialized data, initialized data, and relocation information. The section's type is made up of characteristics flags stored within an enum. These characteristics distinguish whether a section is code, for example. Each section contains permissions, which distinguish whether a section is readable, writable, or executable. These permissions are set at runtime by a loader and typically differ based on the section's role within the program. 
The section table contains all required information to load sections into memory. Each section table contains section headers for each of the program sections. This includes the name of the section that typically abides by a standard naming convention. However, the section names have no effect on the operation of the program. The size of the section once it's mapped into memory, the raw size of the section as it resides on disk, and the section flags represent a number of characteristics about the section. For example, its in-memory permissions for the .txt section are readable and executable due to the image SCN mem read and image SCN mem execute and image SCN CNT code, which distinguish that the section has executable code. So here's an example of a mapped text section in IDA Pro, which provides the section permissions and the x86 disassembly of the code within the section. IDA automatically maps the suggested virtual address to the virtual address of the section, which in this case is 401000. Here's an example of a dot iData section mapped to the virtual address in IDA and contains mapped import information, which is used by the program at runtime. It should be noted, however, that this is generated by IDA itself and isn't an actual section as the binary resides on disk. Here's an example of a dot data section, which contains initialized data that is used by the program at runtime. So we mentioned resources before. However, the resource section stores multiple types of data used by the PE at runtime. This includes bitmaps, application icons, dialogues, strings, etc. These resources are laid out in a similar manner to a file system with directories and leaf nodes, which point to data stored within the resource section. So here is an example PE being analyzed by a tool called Resource Hacker. Resource Hacker parses the image resource directory and image resource directory entry structures to acquire resource data stored within the sections containing resource data. Each tree structure provides the subdirectories which distinguish the resource type, a numeric string or resource identifier, a numeric language identifier for each resource, such as 1033, that's English in this example. The highlighted example here is an icon from the Microsoft Windows Calculator application, which is stored within the PE. The last thing we wanted to cover here is the rich header, and the rich header is an undocumented structure that is appended to the MZ header. This header is not embedded within all portable executables as it is generated by Visual Studio and is therefore only embedded when built with the Visual Studio build tools. The rich header contains entries for tools used to build the PE, including the type of tool, its version, and build number. Each rich header entry is XOR encrypted with a checksum at the end of the header. Here's an example of a decoded rich header in a tool called PE Bear. The tool decrypts the entries with the embedded checksum and maps those values to product IDs, build IDs, and the count for how many times each tool was used and the Visual Studio version. So this is very good for extracting build information from a given portable executable. And with that, here's some further reading that you can do and references that were used for constructing this materials. I highly suggest going through these and looking at those references. And with that, that concludes today's lecture. The portable executable format can be complex and daunting. However, throughout this course, we'll be making use of tools which understand the file format and present information to us in a consumable manner. Knowing the PE format can provide analysts with various insights into how the malware might operate before it is executed and provides avenues for identification of the malware during the binary triage process.